Hi, welcome to the Zelda Informer podcast for March. It is our second podcast, and we have five people today. Uh, first off, there's me, Nathan, the co-owner and webmaster of ZeldaInformer.com. Uh, we also have two other Zelda Informer staff members with us today. Uh, first up is Phil Stetson, the man behind Zelda Informer 3.0. How's it going, dude? Hey, what's up? Not much. We also have Ben with us, known as Viral. He is one of the Bombers writers. How's it going, bro? Uh, not bad, night. How's it going? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we also have two guests with us today. First up is Cody, the webmaster of Zelda Universe, here for his second straight podcast. How is it going? Well, actually, it's more like my third straight podcast, if you include that video one. Shut up. We also have with us. <laughs> we also have with us uh, Nick, known as Zizer, the webmaster or co-webmaster of uh, LegendofZelda.com. How are you doing tonight at 2 a.m. in the morning? I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, how about you? Oh, I am wonderful. So today we're going to talk about. Uh, an aspect of Zelda that maybe hasn't been talked about much lately uh, due to all the Zelda Wii and Spirit Tracks talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about 2D versus 3D and if we think you know, which one's better uh, and if 2D should be coming back because we haven't had one in a while. Uh, all that good stuff. So uh, first we'll start with, let's start with Cody since he is the more veteran member of our podcasting team here. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you prefer? 3D, 2D? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, 3D is generally better because it's just got a whole lot more choices and a whole lot more things that you can do. Uh, I, it's it's possible to make a good 2D game, but generally, generally a 2D game is just a less advanced 3D game. Uh, it's sort of like, I guess, black and white art. It's... Like, it can be good when used correctly, but, I mean, in general, if it's just um, you take the color out of it, it's not that exciting. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Lem, what do you think? Um, also known as Phil Stetson. Yes, that would be me. Uh, I generally prefer 3D. Uh, when it comes to 2D, they're, they're a bit less complicated generally. I mean, even with uh, Spirit Tracks, which I guess was technically 3D, it still was top-down and mostly 2D, but uh, I, I generally prefer 3D. They're usually more uh, immersive. They have better graphics, which doesn't always matter, but when it comes to 2D to 3D, that's a pretty big jump. So, yeah, generally I like 3D more. It's more uh, more interesting and has better, more complicated puzzles and stories and stuff like that. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, Nick, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the 2D versus 3D aspect? Um, I think when people talk about 2D and 3D, they're more talking about eras versus, like, instead of, like, actual gaming experiences because people who say they prefer 2D games are usually referring to the older ones because they think that it's more of a traditional way of doing it and it has better... Uh, game development so when i think of 2d versus 3d you have to think about it in two aspects you gotta think about the time period aspect of it and the actual like how immersive is the game so in terms of the time period i always prefer older games because i feel like they're that originality is hasn't been overdone at that time but as far as immersiveness i've always liked what you can do with a 3d game because it, you there's always a lot more to do and that's what I think makes a game fun, especially for Zelda, because half of the fun is just kind of exploring. I mean, sometimes I would spend more time just walking around doing dumb things than actually trying to advance the game objectives. So, Some pretty good points there. Uh, ben, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, well, you know, jump on the roller coaster. The, the 3D games generally have, you know, the more immersive uh, playing worlds. Uh, the, the puzzles are generally stronger. 
uh, more immersive. The player can really get a feel for the dungeons and the overworld, and the cutscenes are amazing. But you know, two D Zelda games have been amazing. We we even from the very beginning, you know, the original Legend of Zelda, you know, it was it was they were fantastically made games. Link's Awakening comes to mind, one of the better games in the series. So. Really, when it comes down to it, 3D is just it's it it looks much prettier, but the the content of a game could be just as great in a 2D environment. That's some pretty good points. Uh, I know for me, I mean, I'm always I've always been a guy that's kind of preferred the 3D Zeldas, but since everybody seems to be hopping on the 3D bandwagon, I'll try to take the other side. Uh, 2D Zeldas and 2D games in general, uh, I kind of get what Nick. But Nick, you brought up the whole uh, era and like what era did you come from? There, you know, there still are two D games that come out. WiiWare kind of brought back the whole two D thing. Like Mega Man Ten's coming out. Mega Man Nine was a huge hit. Uh, Maru Masa, the Demon Blade, uh, was a really good game that nobody played. Uh, that was two D. Uh, so I mean, the two D games are kind of on the way back right now uh, with the popular masses, mostly thanks to the Wii bringing back the older generation, I believe. But when it comes to the Zelda, there's a few things I think 2D games just do better, and I don't want, it's not really the fault of the 3D games, I think it's just easier to do in a 2D game. Uh, one is the boss fights are harder because the controls are more restrictive. Um, that's, that's pretty much been true a long way. I mean, most of the games are banging out in two years. So I mean, it makes it it makes a difference, and that's what's neat about Zelda Wii coming up is that if all of the reports and all the stuff we've been hearing about over the past few years is true, this game's been in development almost four years. It's the longest. That's twice as long as the normal titles. So yeah, well, the the development time doesn't always reflect the quality of the game, though. I mean, Majora's Mask was like done in one year because they already had the models from Ocarina of Time to work with, I guess, so, like, I think if they would used the Twilight Princess graphics and stuff, and all the same character models like they did with Majora's Mask, they'd probably be able to put out a super good game in one year, but I think if it's the graphical style and the actual development that's taking a lot of the time. Yeah, it's probably part of the reason why Majora's Mask was... I mean, it seemed very polished because they they finished it in like a year and a half, probably even less than that. But they had everything ready already. They didn't really have to make. They had the engine ready, even though they they did kind of update the engine a bit because you had to have the expansion pack on. But still, it just they they were able to get it uh, make a much more polished game than Orc Green of Time was, even though it's debatable if it's better or not. But most people, some people do think so. <laughs> cough, cough, like everyone at Zelda and Yeah, really. <laughs> Except what, Caseman? I think he's like one of the few that still likes Ocarina of Time more. I prefer Ocarina better. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Viral. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, I'll admit it. Another shape in the pack. I think he's lying. <laughs> so uh, I guess the other point then is with the 2D and the 3D, uh, we haven't had a 2D Zelda since I think the Minish Cap was the last one. It was what, in 2005 I think that came out? Something like that. Um, so should they go back to it? Uh, the last two handheld Zeldas have been uh, kind of a mix of 2D slash 3D with the cell shading style from the Wind Waker. Um, and as Spirit Track showed, I mean, there was more that they needed to get done with it, or at least that they felt they could do with it. I think most of us would agree that Spirit Tracks was better than Phantom Hourglass. Uh, but in terms of, I mean, even even looking at a game like Four Swords Adventures, where the big reason that it pretty much failed uh, is the same reason that Four Swords kind of failed, is it required too much stuff for everybody to play. Uh, so even a game like that, uh, you could have another one like that come out, even for the console, even like think like a WiiWare title where it's multiplayer Zelda 2D. I mean, they could even do something like that. So the question is, should they even bring 2D back? Because it seems they are leaning to not doing so. Uh, let's start with... We'll go with Ben. Well, looking at how the DS has been going, and, you know, there's the 
DSi, XL, or whatever coming out soon. I don't really see Nintendo going back to the 2D. I'm sure they'll expand upon what Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass have brought to us. But, you know, I'd really like to see a 2D Zelda come back, even if they, you know, produced a standalone WiiWare title or a multiplayer game, as Nate suggested. Okay, uh, Lem, what do you think? Um, I mean, I would like them to do another 2D game. It's a... But if they did do it, I wouldn't want it to be in the same style as, like, A Link to the Past or Oracle of Seasons, the whole, uh... I mean, they would have to do something different, I think, if they went back to 2D. Part of the reason why I think they don't do 2D anymore is because they... I think they feel like they've, like, milked it, done as much as I can with it. So, I, if they did do it, they would have to do something unique. Maybe, I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm thinking of, but it would just they would just have to mess around with the graphic style and maybe make it, like if they did a 2D game on the Wii, that would actually be kind of interesting to me, especially if they made it a WiiWare game. Well, see, what's interesting about that, and some people don't realize this, um, the last three 2D games I think that we've had weren't even made by Nintendo. They were made by Capcom. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's one of those things where Nintendo themselves hasn't really even gone into the realm of 2D outside of, what, Four Swords? That might be the only real attempt at 2D they've done, and again, like I said, failed because it required too many peripherals. Uh, what do you think, Cody? Well, I think Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass were for all intents and purposes, a pretty 2D games. I mean, like, for, with the graphics, it was sort of like at an angle you could see 3D-ish graphics, but it's still basically the same control system of, say, the Minish Cap. You have an overhead view, and you run around and swipe the thing to make your sword go. It's not 3D like Ocarina of Time was, where you could zoom in and, you know, look up and down and around. It was just the same overhead view, except that in Phantom Hourglass, the boat sections were 3D, and in Spirit Tracks, I guess, the train sections were 3D, but I think they really are still making 2D games, just with some little extra features. Nick, what do you think about it? Uh, I think the problem with 2D games is the two-dimensional idea represents simplicity, and when you try to take a two-dimensional game and make it complicated, it really just kind of draws away from the fact that you've tried to make something simple, but then you're making it complicated. I mean, I don't. It, it seems like they're indecisive between what they're trying to get out of here. So, if they went to making a 2D game. I think that ignoring all graphical accomplishments would be best, and they should make it simple and focus on like making it a really engaging story, like something that shakes up Zelda lore instead of just being another hunt for the Triforce and kill Ganon. Kind of, you know, find seven medallions or save seven maidens or whatever. Kind of monotonous you know, rehash of every other game we've played. And that's a fair point, uh, especially since there supposedly is a new game coming out this year, um, and obviously who knows when the next handheld game is coming out. A lot of people, especially those that have been playing Zelda for a long time, like us, uh, we're obviously sick of the same story over and over again. Even uh, Spirit Tracks was, I mean, it was unique because Zelda was with you the whole time, but, I mean, her body was captured, so it was kind of like the same thing. You had to save her body uh, to prevent them from, you know, resurrecting themselves in it, which reminds me of every other time that Ganondorf has used Zelda's body in a stage of a fight. Um, <laughs> and the fact that Maladus himself was just... It was Ganondorf with a different name. It'd be nice for a, a different story in general, and I think 2D... Um, as mu as good as you can do storytelling with a 3D game, uh, to cut scenes and all that additional character interaction you can get, like Majora's Mask uh, has shown us in the past, I think what 2D does is allow for an even greater scope of storytelling because everything else is so simplistic, uh, like you brought up, that it's easier to focus on things like the story. Because uh, you don't need to worry about, well, what's this guy going to look like? Well, okay, it's a sprite. It's really not that hard to come up with a unique look for a sprite. Uh, so, I mean, that is an interesting point. I mean, as far as 2D games go, I think it's always been really... I always enjoy games where you... While instead of having a cutscene, you literally walk up to a character and, like, the way they would do... The way they do cutscenes now, but back then they would have 
a character have this large monologue and explain things to you and that's always interesting to me because it's like you're gaining your knowledge from a primary source as opposed to watching it happen i don't know it's just i just think it's fun that way and i will say uh one reason that they also may be strained from 2d 2d is extremely easy to emulate and thus very easy to pirate Mm-hmm. It's another point to bring up because I'm not seeing them making a lot of 2D games for any franchise, really. And that could be why. I mean, the main, uh, I don't know if that's exactly the whole reason because even Spirit Tracks, I mean, anything that's on a handheld is pretty easy to emulate because, I mean, it's the program's already made and it's not too hard to run on computers like 3D games are or just console games. Like, I... I know a PS3 emulator doesn't even exist because processors just can't handle it. So it's just, it's very hard to do. It has more to do with me. I feel like the reason why they're not doing 2D games is because they feel like they need to, uh, it's it's not, like they're beyond that now. It, like the 3D was like a new step. It's a, a new challenge for them to make uh, better and more immersive games rather than go back to 2D and just make simplistic games and i think they feel like they're beyond that that they're past that point yeah i guess it's sort of like i don't know like doing a silent movie like purposely doing 2d it's just sort of if you're doing it 2d on purpose it's either because you want it to be simplistic or because you um you want to be artistic yeah if they wanted to do it they would have to do it yeah if they wanted to do it they would have to do it for reasons beyond uh we just feel like it well see nintendo is a money factory anything they put out they're gonna sell millions of copies and make lots of money so the question is how much money do they want to make because they could spit out 2d games like water i i mean seriously there's so many fans out there that love a link to the past i i mean you could there's probably just as many who think A Link to the Past is the best game in the Zelda series as people think Ocarina of Time is the best game in the series. Or so, that Ocarina of Time is just a 3D A Link to the Past. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that. So, I mean, if they think, I think if they made a 2D game, it would have to be, if they wanted to make money from it, it would have to be reminiscent of A Link to the Past in a way because it would, it would bring those people in that. Uh, love that game, in which there is a lot of them. I mean, there's some people I know that won't even play the 3D games because they hate them. They don't think... I'm not even sure exactly what it is they hate about them, but they they love A Link to the Past to the point of hating 3D games. Yeah, I guess it's just picking a side. You know, they want to be the, the old cool people who were before Zelda got, you know, famous. The indies. <laughs> the purest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also one of those things that Nintendo, you know, they keep pushing the casual market, which a lot of the casual market they're hitting are people that used to play games um, but don't anymore. And that could be an interesting aspect to think about if they made like a 2D a Link to the Past styled uh, looking game. Like, it could bring back some of those people that they were playing A Link to the Past when they were, you know, in their 20s, early 20s, and now they're, like, 40, and they haven't played Zelda in forever, and they're like, hey, what's this? That, that That's the Zelda I remember. Yeah, well, that was the idea. That was the idea behind Super, New Super Mario Brothers mm-hmm. Wii, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. You know, nostalgia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 10 million plus worldwide sales. Yeah, pretty sure they're doing pretty good. I mean, personally, if if they did a 2D game, I would much rather them do something original. But I know Nintendo. If they did do it, it wouldn't be. It would be something to get people back, people who played A Link to the Past and haven't played it again. They might pull the Pokemon and just do a version of Zelda remake or something, and, and that will bring in dollars without having to do that much work. Well, Nintendo is always interesting because. You know, they are the innovators in the industry. They're always finding new ways to do things. But one thing they've always been terrible about is uh, franchises. They milk their, especially their, their Mario and Zelda especially, uh, plus Pokemon now. I mean, they milk those franchises like, like nothing. Like uh, Team Rocket. 
<laughs> right. I mean, they, they're not good at necessarily making new, unique franchises. I mean, the last one they really came up with was what? Uh, Pikmin? And even that franchise seems to have died out. If you count story based ones, because there's also, there is like. Yeah, things like Metroid. Yeah. Yeah, there's Metroid, but they, like, they don't milk. They don't milk uh, Metroid like they do like a Mario. Mario's in everything. <laughs> yeah, there's more than 350 Mario games. I and all sure. Zelda, what? Had, there's two Tingle games that are Zelda related. There's Tetris Trackers. There's Link's Crossbow Training. Uh, you know, not to mention being a big featured player on some of the earlier uh, Super Smash Brothers and Super Smash Brothers Brawl and Melee, like. Being a, one of the big characters on the cover used to help sell sales. He was in Soul Calibur. Yeah, he was in Soul Calibur, too. I actually think it would be really interesting if they did a like did what they do with Metroid. Because they, they seem to have a lot of freedom with Metroid. They let uh, random, basically random people just mess with it. They let Retro do it, and let it, now they're letting uh, Team Ninja make their way with it. Uh, they don't seem to have that much freedom with with Zelda. But, uh, see, I think that's easily explainable. Uh, Metroid has never been a big selling game for them. Like, if it was for any other company, Metroid would be a massive game. But it's, like, best-selling game has only sold, you know, like around 3 million copies. And the best-selling Zelda game is, like, 7 million plus. I mean, New Super Mario Bros. Wii just pumped out 10 million plus it's only been out a few months. I mean, it's one of those... Metroid has never sold as well as their other franchises. So I think that's why they were comfortable saying, hey, look, this is going to become our hardcore gamer title. And we're going to let you know more hardcore teams like Retro and Team Ninja screw with it because, I mean, it's not getting the same sales as the other games already. So we can push this to a different audience. Uh, I mean, I still don't really see what what they're so nervous about because I mean, it's like they put out two Zelda games generally around the same time as each other. That's that seems to be their trend, and I I don't see what's stopping them from letting other people take the Zelda franchise and do what they want with it. I mean, with with supervision, obviously they did that with Capcom, but. Uh, I mean, it's not they would make more money. They would, people would still buy it, and I don't think they would make people would get tired of it either. So I just, I don't see why they're not doing it. It, it seems like it's a, it would be an easy way to get money, to me at least. Part of it's probably a lot to do with the fact that I mean, when you think about Metroid and you think about like Mario and all those other games that they supposedly do these things with, like how much in depth backstory is involved with those things. I mean, when you think about the complexity of what Zelda represents and how careful each detail would have to be, I mean, can you imagine the the turmoil they would cause if some company came in and made some small change that, like, retcons half the series and Nintendo doesn't catch it and they release this game? Like, just, there's so much more at stake, I think, which is part of why they won't do it. Thank God help us if anything conflicts the bloody timeline. Theorists will be crazy. <laughs> Seriously, can you imagine though? Just the because when you think about it, we're it's partly maybe to do with people like us. We are so involved in following their every little move with the story and the timeline and this and that. Like, there's nothing to really catch them with that on things like Mario and Metroid. I mean, I'm no expert on Metroid, but from what I understand, it's nowhere near as complicated. It's it's not. No, it's, but, it's straightforward. The Mario timeline is so complicated. <laughs> The Mario timeline, if you include, like, the cartoons and the oh, right. hotel adventures, it's like... Um, I, I remember, I actually do remember somebody trying to put, like, a timeline together. I, I don't know how successful they were, though. Yeah, like, why are they in the Mushroom Kingdom? You know, are they from Italy, or are they from America, or are they from the Mushroom Kingdom? Oh, it's all confusing. You know, is this a split... It's a split timeline, I think. <laughs> oh no. A three way split, different Multiple dimensions. Multiple dimensions. <laughs> Blue swamp all over again. <laughs> I mean, I, okay. I, I, think, I think what they could do with Zelda if they were worried about that, if that is the thing they're worried about, is people retconning or whatever, they could do. I feel like they could tell those people that you can't. 
to do a game that has anything to do with the timeline. They could do like a, a Majora's Mask game where it's like a, a spin-off of one that's already happened or something like that. And if they do that, it wouldn't hurt the timeline as much. At least I don't think so. Oh, well, yeah, well, Zelda's quite close to home. Maybe Miyamoto and Yuma, they don't want people, you know, messing with it. It could be as simple as that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be... A, it's a pride thing. It, and Mario and Zelda, they're, they're Miyamoto's babies. Uh, no, my theory is that they did, they did entrust Zelda to an outside company once. I think that scared him into submission, into never allowing it again. Yeah, see, I know you're talking about Phillips. I don't I don't think that was generally on purpose and they had no control over that. They they gave them the rights to it, then they backed out of it and Phillips just made those god awful games because they knew that they could sell them. I that's really their only reason. Maybe they were trying to ruin the Zelda series. Maybe, I don't know. I doubt it because if you look at it, they needed something big to get the Philips CDI off the ground because they didn't have any like big franchises. And Zelda, when they got that contract with Nintendo, it was like, oh my god, we have you know, an established franchise that we can use to help launch with this team with Nintendo. And then Nintendo's like, see you later. We don't like the Philips CDI. And they still, ha- they still had the license, obviously, to make the game. So they're like, well, we're going to use these games to launch the, ser- uh, the, uh, the console. What we found out is that Philips is not a game developer. That's what those games proved. (laughs) And with that, this podcast has already ran a little long. Uh, We're going to wrap it up. I want to thank Nick from LegendOfZelda.com and Cody from Zelda Universe. Uh, Thanks, guys. You're welcome. It was much fun. Thanks for the invitation. Catch that Pikachu. No problem. Last minute podcast for the win. And then uh, we'll thank... Uh, Phil and Ben, the fellows of the Informer staff, hopefully you guys will be in future casts with me. See everybody later.